Is it worth it to try and become an optometrist in 2021? In this video, we're going to go over the salaries, the job market, the debt, and other factors and variables that you should consider before pursuing optometry. But first, what is an optometrist and what do they do? Optometrists are specialists that focus on the eyes and other parts of the visual system. They can diagnose and treat visual problems, manage diseases, injuries, and other disorders of the eye. They also have the ability to prescribe eyeglasses or contact lenses as needed. Optometrists also consult and refer patients to ophthalmologists or other healthcare practitioners. Optometrists and ophthalmologists are not the same profession. Optometrists also educate and counsel patients on contact lens care, visual hygiene, lighting arrangements, and safety factors. It definitely isn't easy to become an optometrist. First, you have to complete a four-year undergraduate degree. Then you have to get into one of the 20 accredited optometry programs all across the United States. In the United States, optometry programs are four years. In other countries, it can be a little bit more varied. Some are actually three years. Optometry school isn't cheap. If you look on Reddit, there are stories of people having 200000 or even $300,000 in student loan debt after completing an optometry program. But on this front, there's pretty good news for optometrists. They tend to make a pretty good income. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average base pay for an optometrist in 2020 was $125,440. This was more than psychologists, audiologists, pharmacists, veterinarians, and medical scientists. But it is less than dentists, and it's it is less than physicians as well. And optometrists have seen pretty solid wage growth over the years. In the year 2000, the average base salary for an optometrist was $84,980. This grew to $125,440 in 2020. So about a $40,000 wage growth over about two decades. This comes out to about $2,000 per year when looking at over the total two decades. If you just look at from 2015 to 2020, the average wage growth is 1600 per year. So wage growth has slowed down a little bit in the past couple of years. Based on the two decade wage growth number for optometrists by 2024, the average base salary should rise to around 133,000 per year. And by 2030, it would rise to about 145,000 per year. And the other really interesting thing about optometrist pay is the pay is wildly different depending on which state or metro area that the optometrist is practicing in. In Washington, D.C., the average base salary for an optometrist is $190,000 per year. This is followed by Connecticut, where it's about $178,000. North Dakota, Alaska, and then Kentucky also tend to pay optometrists the greatest wage when looking in the United States. Pretty much all the dark blue states in this map tend to pay optometrists a greater wage than the average. And if you're asking yourself how much do optometrists make around the world, they tend to make the most in the United States, base salary around 125,000 per year. Number two in my sample was Australia, where the base wage is around 124,000 when converted to USD. Then Canada, 105, United Kingdom, 102, Germany, 100, and France, around $90,000 per year for an optometrist. So optometrists can definitely do pretty well financially. Another cool thing regarding optometrists is about 11% of them are self-employed. So for more ambitious optometrists, they could have the ambition of starting multiple optometry practices if they really wanted to. Next up is the job market. Is there a lot of demand for optometrists in 2021? The first thing to understand is this is actually a pretty small niche occupation. According to the government, there were 36,690 employed optometrists in the year 2020. And this is much less than the number of employed pharmacists, where there's over, there's over 300,000 employed pharmacists. There's a lot more psychologists, veterinarians, medical scientists, and dentists. So this is a much smaller niche occupation compared to some of the other healthcare fields. But don't let this dismay you in any way. There has been significant job growth for optometrists over the past two decades. In the year 2000, the government recorded 23,880 employed optometrists. This peaked in 2019 to 39,420. And then in 2020, it dropped a little bit, mostly because of the pandemic. But really, optometrists weren't hurt too much. There was really only a loss of about 3,000 employed. And if you look at some of the other occupations, they were much more deeply impacted than this one. 
The government does have a pretty average outlook for optometrists going forward. They're only expecting a 4% growth in the number of optometrists over the next 10 years. This means that by 2030, there'd be around 38,158 employed optometrists in the United States. But also keep in mind regarding the job market for optometrists, there's only 20 optometry schools in the United States churning out optometrists every single year. And you add in the fact that we have kind of an aging population, the baby boomers are getting older and there's a lot of them. So that could definitely lead to a greater demand for optometrists going forward. But one thing we can do is we can look at the real time demand for optometrists right now. We can actually compare the number of job postings against the number of employed. And this can really let us know how competitive it is to get an optometry job right now. I typically use three different job boards, Indeed.com, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn. On Glassdoor, when I searched for optometrist in the United States, it gave me 3,831 job postings. On Indeed.com, there were 3,671 job postings. And finally, on LinkedIn, there were 7,762 job postings. Keep in mind, there's only 36,690 employed optometrists. So we can compare the number of job postings on these three different job boards against the number of employed. And it looks really good. There's really healthy demand for optometrists right now. So if you're concerned about finding a job after graduating a four year optometry program, this kind of shows that there's quite a bit of job postings out there, at least at this moment in time. Another variable people like to consider when they're choosing a career is if their Myers-Briggs personality type lines up with other people in the field. According to the Myers-Briggs company, certain personality types are attracted to certain occupations. According to the Myers-Briggs company, the most likely type to become an optometrist is the ENTJ, also known as the commander. This is followed by the INTJ, also known as the architect, then the advocate, also known as the INFJ, and finally the giver, the ENFJ. Notice that all four of these types are intuitive over sensing. All four of these types also have a preference for judging over perceiving. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming an optometrist in 2021. There's very healthy job growth. There's quite a few job postings out there. This is a small niche occupation and there are some cons about that. Sometimes with small niche occupations, you kind of have to travel across state lines in order to find employment. But as of right now, there are plenty of job postings for optometrists, at least all over the United States. If you enjoyed this video, definitely also check out my audiologist video. This profession is very much focused on hearing while optometrists are very much focused on seeing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.